Hey everyone, and welcome to Wicode. Where in this video, I'm going to teach you how to connect a node server to a Postgres database using Docker Compose. So here's an example of what we're going to build. If we just run Docker Compose up, we can see we have our database system is ready to accept connections, and our node server is waiting, and then after a bit, it connects to Postgres. So we're going to learn how to start up containers in a specific order. We're also going to learn some things like creation scripts, so we can see we've connected to a Postgres database and gotten a row of data, which will come from a SQL script that we use Docker to place this data and create this table in the Postgres image. We're also going to learn how to have live updates. So right now we have hello, how are you? Well, we can just type in different things, like what scepter is the best Chrome extension, like this, which will get logged to the console so we can get some live updates. But we're going to learn all this in this video. Alrighty, so to begin, we just have an empty project right here. And first, what we're going to do is define our environment variables inside a .env file. So file called .env. And these variables that we place in here will represent things like the location of our node server and Postgres database in the Docker network, along with also some database initialization values. So I'm just going to paste these in like this. So we can see we have our node server host and our node server port in the Docker network, as well as the Postgres database server host and port. And these variables right here, the names of these, so Postgres user, password, DB, um, are very important as the Postgres Docker image reserves these names for database initialization. For example, Postgres user and Postgres password set a user and their password and give them super user powers. And the Postgres DB environment variable here sets the name of the default database. So these names are important and used under the hood by the Postgres Docker image. But that's all we're going to do here. Now let's start setting up our node project. And so to do that, I'm just going to create a folder called server, which will hold our node code. And we're also going to create another one called database, which will be our Postgres database. But let's go into this server directory. And let's initialize it as an npm project with npm init es6-y. Now we have our package.json file. And what we're going to do next is we're going to install nodemon as a development dependency so we can get some live code changes. And now what we're going to do is create a start script to run our application. And to do this, of course, we're going to be using nodemon, but we're also going to set our main key in here, which is the entry point to our application. We'll set that to our server.js file, which let's create real quick. So it'll be a folder source and a file server.js. And then back in our package.json, let's create a start script. And all this is going to do is run our entry point using nodemon. So this dot right here is represents this main key. All right, so now we've got our initial setup. Let's work on connecting node to Postgres. And we're going to do this with a library called PG. So it's just npmi and then PG. And this library is a pure JavaScript implementation of a PostgreSQL client. And a PostgreSQL client is essentially a connection to a PostgreSQL server that can issue commands and database operations. But we're just going to install this here. And now there are two different ways to connect to Postgres with the PG library. And these are a client and also a pool. I'm just going to import the pool like this. And so we're going to be using the pool, but you can also use a client. So a client is one static connection to the Postgres server, while a pool, what we're using here, is a dynamic number of clients that have automatic reconnect functionality. And now that we have our pool object instantiated, we need to supply it with the envir environment variables that we created inside our .env file. Our .env file. So what I'm going to do here, actually remove this, and in the constructor, we pass some connection information. So we can see we have our host of the database, the port, user password, and things like that. And so this pool object, just to note, is initially empty, and clients are created when they are needed. I actually have a video that goes pretty in-depth into that if you want to check it out. I believe it's called Postgres pool or something like that. But now to ensure that we're connected, um, let's we're going to write some code that will query the server as well. So we're going to do all this inside a function, async function called main. And what we do initially is we're going to check out a client from the pool. And this is done with this connect method. And now that we've checked a client or a connection from the pool, we can use this client to query the Postgres server. And we can query it with the query method. Um, let me paste all this in right below. So we have our client, and now we can use this query method to query the Postgres server. And then we're going to extract the rows, the returned rows from the response, and just log them out. And what we're going to do is we're going to get them from a table called subscriber, which we're actually going to create using 
Postgres Docker images creation scripts, which uh, we'll learn about those in a bit. And also note how we wrap this in a try catch and finally, so that we can release the client back into the pool. So this client.release will release the client back to the pool. And we want to do this whether the query was successful or not. And this is because if we don't release the client back into the pool, then soon the pool will be depleted and there will be no clients to handle any requests. And now all we need to do is just run our main function. So below here, we're just going to call it and attach some then and catch to it. If we're successful, we'll say connected to Postgres. And if not, we'll log out the error. But that's all the code we need to do. Next, let's focus on creating our node Docker image. And so of course, we're going to do this with a Docker file. So create a file called Docker file in our server folder. And for this image, we're going to use node version 20 as the base image. So here's how we, where we specify node version 20 as the base image. We also set the working directory to dash server right here. And this means any run like we have here, CMD, copy, these commands will all be executed in this directory. We then we also copy over our package.json and package.lock.json and then install the dependencies with npm and then run our start script. And note how we're not copying over any code in this Docker file into the container. And this is because we're going to be doing this with volumes, which of course we'll do later on. But so we've got, that was pretty simple. Now let's create our Postgres Docker image. So in our database folder, we're going to create another Docker file. And in here, we're going to use Postgres version 16 as the base image. And that's all we're really going to have in here, except for another line that we're going to use to fill our Postgres database with an initial table and data. And this will be that subscriber table that we are going to query here. So we're going to create this using Docker. Specifically, we're going to use initialization scripts. And what these are, let me create one right here called subscriber.sql. So initialization scripts are SQL or script files that are placed inside a specific folder in the Docker image. So this is an SQL file that we're going to use as an initialization script. And let's just paste some SQL code into here where we're going to create a table called subscriber. And then we're just going to insert one value. And what it is is Witceptor, which is my Chrome extension if you want to check it out on the web store. And then we just have an email address. So if we place this SQL file into a specific folder in the Docker Postgres Docker image, it will run the script. And the folder that we have to copy this into is called, let me paste it into our Docker file. It's called docker entry point initdb.d. And I also have a video that goes more in depth into this if you want to check it out. But essentially any scripts placed inside this folder will be executed after the default Postgres user and database are created. So because we're placing our subscriber.sql file in there, the, all this stuff here will be ran by Docker. But so that's all we really need for those. Now let's start working with Docker Compose. So we're going to create docker compose.yaml file at the top level. And to begin, we're going to create some required volumes. So I'm just going to paste this in here. So this top level volumes declaration lets us configure named volumes. And the name property that we're using here lets us set a custom name for each volume. So when we run docker compose up for the first time, these volumes will be created. And then these volumes will be reused when the command is ran um, any other time. This volume here will handle our node modules folder. And this one right here, database V, will persist our Postgres data. And before we go on any further, let's talk about why we have to have a node modules, a dedicated volume for node modules. So the node modules folder can be problematic for Docker if it contains packages with binaries specific to certain operating systems. In other words, certain packages will install different files depending on the operating system of the computer. And this can cause issues if you are developing an application with Docker, as the Docker container doesn't always use the same operating system as the host computer. So here I'm using Mac OS, but our Docker container is going to be using a, a version of Linux. So if we copy over our node modules from Mac OS into our Linux Docker container, this could cause some um, bad issues and basically break everything. So this is why we create this volume right here. But so now that we've got that out of the way, let's start working on our node service. And so what I'm going to do is go figure. I'm just going to paste this in and go over what it does. So what we have is a service called server, which of course will be our node server. We're naming the image server version 1.0.0. And this happens if both the image and the build declarations right here are specified, then Docker will name the image what we supply right here. Then we have container name, which will be the name of our container. And this will come from our server host environment variable. 
We then tell Docker where to find our Docker file to build this service. We then specify our environment variable file that we will use to load all our environment variables into this image. We map a port on our local machine to the one in the container, and then we have our volumes. And so this one will copy all our server code, including package.json, package.log.json, um, all that stuff into the container. However, then we have this node modules volume that will prevent our node modules here from being copied into our Docker container. And finally, this is very important right here, is we have a depends on declaration, which essentially makes it so our node service will wait until our database service is healthy. And so let's talk about this more right here, because this is pretty important. So we're using this depends on attribute because before we attempt to connect to Postgres, we want to make sure that the service is healthy. In other words, we want Postgres to be ready to accept connections. By default, this depends on attribute will wait until the service has started, but just because the service has started doesn't mean that it's ready to accept connections. And because of this, we set it to a condition called service healthy, which allows us to set a custom condition to determine if the service is ready. And we're gonna create this health check inside our database service which we're actually gonna create right now. And this will make more sense probably when I show you this, but let me paste this in. So here we have our database service, which we named database version 1.0.0, the container name, location of doc file, all this stuff that we did previously. And we also have a volume right here, which is important because providing a volume to this location in the container, so var lib postgresql dash data, will ensure that our data is persisted even when we tear down the container and remove it because we can just apply this volume again and it'll have all our data in it. We also run this command right here to change the Postgres default port from 5432 to our environment variable. And here is our health check. So this right here is essentially what this depends on is relying on when we specify service as healthy. So this health check attribute right here determines whether the service is healthy or not. And here what we're doing is we're testing the Postgres container every five seconds for, or for five times. And what we're doing is we're testing the health with this test command, and the command we're running is pg is ready, and then specifying the port, username, and database. So this pg is ready command is a utility command to check the connection status of a PostgreSQL server. So essentially when this service is being run up, being ran, every five seconds we will check if Postgres is ready, and if it is, then this health check passes, and that means the service is healthy, and we can start our node server. And then when we run this code and we try to connect, we won't have any issues. But that's all it takes to get this started. So all we need to do now is just make sure we're at the top level of our directory and then run the command docker compose. And then we're gonna supply our env file, which is .env, and then up. So supplying env right here will load environment variables into this file. And then this line right here will actually load them into our image. But if we run this, let's see if this works. So we can see everything running right here. Our containers were created. We can see database is ready, system is ready to accept connections. And now we can see our node server starts up. So if we didn't have this health check, essentially our database service would start. There's some heavy things involved in getting the Postgres database up. So our node system would try and connect before the database is actually ready to accept connections. So that's why this health check right here is very important. But also because we have a volume mapping our source code and we're using NodeMon, we can also have some live changes. So if we say like, we log out, install my Chrome extension with Scepter like this, we can see it instantly logged out to the console. But so this is my video on how to connect to Postgres and Node using Docker Compose. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.